and they were saying that after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to lead the ummah that the due right up on Sare Madina. <coughs> got it? And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu got informed, so he came and he took Abu Bakr with him radiallahu an on their way to trellis. They saw Abu Bakr al Jarrah sitting to a wall. So Abu Bakr told him radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr, come on with us. So they went to the trellis. And at that time, Zayd ibn Sabit, he was giving his speech. So they sat there, listened to him. Muhammad ibn Maslama, he gave his speech. They listened to him. One man was sleeping on the ground, covered in a, or wrapped in a kambal or blanket. So Abu Bakr says, who is this? So they said, Saad ibn Ubada, why, what's wrong with him? A fever. I said, okay. So when he heard that Abu Bakr is here, so he woke up and said, Salam alaikum, Salam alaikum. And then he said, Abu Bakr told him that, Saad, yes, take a rest. He said, um, I am not feeling relaxed when you are here and I am still. He said, No, you are sick. Just. So then, when they finished, so Sayyidina Umar was standing up. Yes, and he had a very strong character and that was a situation where a humble character, yes, a calm character, it will work. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr told him, Umar, sit down, he said, and Abu Bakr, he stood up and he said that what you said, we listened to it very attentively and you spoke good. Yes, we endorse it. Of course, you are the people. You are the people. You provided us shelter when we migrated from Makkah. You are the people. You shared your properties with us. And you are the people. You never stayed behind whenever Rasulullah was going for any jihad. You sacrificed your lives. There is no question on that. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this messenger in Makkah, So falabbahu man labbah. He was accepted by the one who accepted him. Got it? And refused by one who refused him. And then what happened? You don't know and you cannot imagine. That what was happening to us day and night in Makkah. But we were facing that. When we accepted the message, we faced all these difficulties for 13 years. Until... They turned us out from our own homeland and we came here. And here you did a great job. Then we and you both as one and the same ummah under the leadership of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, both of us, we did what we did. May Allah accept it. The so Saad ibn Ubadah said, of course, the difficulties you people faced, we cannot imagine. We cannot. Imagine even how much difficulties you people passed through or went through. So then Abu Bakr, but I heard the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Al-Aimmatu Ba'di min Quraysh. Leaders after me will be from Quraysh. So that was just like throwing cold water on burning fire. So Ansar, they said, Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Lazi la ilaha illa wa al-Hayy. Sorry for what we said. We didn't know this word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, what we taught, we have no, never spoken out a single word in this regard. Because when text is there, there is no use of aql. Use of aql is needed where? Where there is no text. No nas of Quran, no nas of hadith. Now when nas of hadith is there, there is no use of sense there. Then you have to say Amanna wa Sadaqna. So they said now up to you. Whosoever you will bring forth. We will be behind him the way we were behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. He said that. I have these two colleagues of mine. Umar. Ashaddun fi amrillah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. 
that he is the strong man regarding the deen of Allah. No compromise. He does not know compromise. I think that in his dictionary, compromise was not there. This word, he dropped it. Who? Sayyidina Umar. He was not a man of compromise. That's why Rasulullah tied him ashaddun fi amrillah. And he said that the other man, Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, Rasulullah titled him Aminu Hazir Ummah, the trustworthy guy of the Ummah of Muhammad. So, any one of them both, now Umar said, I thought for a while that now if this talk will start, Abu Umar, Abu Ubaidah, Umar, Abu Ubaidah. So he jumped. Yes. And he said that, listen. When Rasulullah was alive and he was unable to come to masjid to lead us in prayer, who he appointed as our Imam in masjid? So they said Abu Bakr. He said in his lifetime, he was our Imam in deen. When Rasulullah he appointed him for our deeni Imamat. So can we not appoint him for our dunyavi Imamat? I said, what a good thing you have said. Yes, so the first man who stood up, that was Muhammad ibn Maslama, and he got the hand of Abu Bakr, I hereby solemnly affirm. And he gave his bayah. The second one was Sayyidina Umar. And then all of them, they did that. Then Abu Bakr was brought to Masjid. And the people were there, people of Medina. So they said that Abu Bakr, he has been elected by these elders in trellis of Banu Sa'idah. So now you people come to him one by one and give your pledge to Abu Bakr. So they so that was a type of voting at that time. Got it? So they gave their vote in favor of whom? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. But as that was the vote given by the people of Medina only. So that's why it is called Bayatul Khassa. Bayatul Khassa. Yes, the Bayat of specific people. <coughs> because he was appointed by the Bay of the people of Trellis who were there. <coughs> the second precedence when Abu Bakr he was on his deathbed, <coughs> Sahaba were visiting him. They were asking him that after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, a dispute happened. Now we don't know what will happen after your death. So he said, I am thinking. So he said later on that I thought for three days. That whom should I appoint as Khalifa after me? To lead the Ummah ahead. Because a lot of fitnas will arise and erupt. We need a man who can control that. So he said, I was looking at all these major sahaba. Especially those who are from Al-Ashara, Al-Mubashara. So he said that two men were coming like, like this. Look, alternate. Two men. Umar and Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنهما. But he said, that was a critical condition for me to give priority to which one? So then I thought that Ali, he has a nature. If a hurdle and hindrance comes in his way ahead, so first he will handle that situation. Doesn't matter how long it will take, but first he will try to break that hindrance. And that hurdle. And later on he will go ahead. And Umar. In this regard he has a nature. That if he can make his way ahead. Leaving this hurdle and hindrance on side. So he will go ahead and he will take the Ummah ahead. And Ummah now is in need of that going ahead. So that's why I give priority. To Umar. He wrote that. Wasiya. Invited. Sayyidina Osman radiallahu ta'ala an. He dictated that. Azama ahidha bi Abu Bakrin. You have studied there in Khulafah al-Rashidin. 
لہذا ما عہد بی ابو بکر فی وقت یؤمن فیہ الکافر و یتوب فیہ المزلم that this is a wasiya and will Abu Bakr is making in a time time of death when a kafir yu'minu fi al-kafir wa yatuhu fi al-muslim when a kafir at that time wants to accept Islam but that is not acceptable at that time and a sinner he is trying to make his tawbah at that time tawbah is accepted at that time also this karam of Allah and generosity of Allah میں اللہ کی وہ توفیق اب توبہ and he said that this is what I see good for the امہ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا اَيَّمُنْ قَلَبِي يَنْقَلِبُونَ if somebody he is doing wrong so he will face the consequences so this is called استخلاف what Appointment by the previous Khalifa. Istikhlaf. So this is the second way. The third way. When Sayyidina Umar got injured. Who stabbed him? Abu Lulu Firoz. Khabiz. He was from our friend country. Yes. Yes, but friend country got a good dose, so they slept now. So anyhow, <laughs> they are sleeping now. Yes. <clears throat> Because they were throwing missiles here and there and, and there into all Muslim countries. Yes. What a, what a missile. It is not going to watch Tel Aviv. <laughs> yes. One went to Damascus, another went to Baghdad. A third, a third one went to Panjgur. So the Panjgur people, they waited for 24, 48 hours. Yes, maybe they will apologize. But they said, no, we, we hit our wanted. They say, okay, so we are coming to hit our wanted also. <clears throat> So they also, they went inside. <clears throat> so anyhow, <laughs> look, before that, when Tariq Jan had concern, what will happen? He said, now a third world war will start. <laughs> so he said that, Sheikh, you heard the news? I say nothing. I say, just wait for <laughs> 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> yes, I told him. <laughs> they just wait for 24 to 48 hours? Yes. If not, so they will give him a dose and that will be the end of the story. And they did it. They do not tolerate even the India, such a big power. So how will they, how they will tolerate such like things? <clears throat> yes. And today, our general is Ajib. Our general today said, actually, Iran is our Muslim brother. Yes, but uh, uh, if we would not have done it, so that was a problem for us. And he said that we were not hitting them. We are sending a message to India. <laughs> yes. Yes. He said that we are sending a message to India. They do not mess around us. Yes. Got it? So anyhow. So in Sayyidina Umar, he got injured. Sahaba were visiting him and asking him to appoint someone as Khalifa. So he said, Law lam astakhlif, falam yastakhlif man kana khairam minni. If I am not going to appoint anyone after me, so the one who was more better than all of us and better than us al al-itlaq, he didn't appoint anybody. Means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left the word, he didn't appoint any Khalifa. Number one, and he said, وَلَوِ اسْتَخْلَفْتُ فَقَدْ اسْتَخْلَفَ مَنْ كَانَ خَيْرًا مِنِّي And if I will appoint someone after me, so the one who was better than me, Abu Bakr, he did this istikhlaf and appointed me. He said, by this he was mean referring to that both has the precedence. And precedence is a source of law. Precedence is what? Source of law. So now, 
He said, but whom should I appoint? And he mentioned two names. Lokan Abu Ubeda, Hayyan. If Abu Ubeda Abdul Jarrah would have been alive, I would have appointed him as Khalifa. And if Allah would have asked me that, Umar, to whom you handed over the Ummah Muhammad? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I will say that, oh Allah, to the one about whom your Prophet said that he is the trustworthy of my Ummah. Got it? And if Salim, the liberated and emancipated slave of Huzaifa, Salim, Mawla Abi Huzaifa, Salim was an Abyssinian man, liberated slave. And if Salim, Mawla of Abu Huzaifa would have been alive, so I would have appointed him as Khalifa. If Allah would have asked me, so I will tell him that, oh Allah, I have handed over the Ummah of your beloved Prophet to the one about whom your Prophet said we were sitting there and Salim was passing by. Salim was passing. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if you want to look at a man from Jannah walking on earth, so look at Salim. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam certified him that he is a Jannati walking on earth. So I would have said to Allah that I have handed over the Ummah of Muhammad to a Jannati man. So they said that you can appoint your son, Abdullah ibn Umar. He said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'u. Why? He said, if this is something good, so I have taken my due share from that good. Yes, the family of Khattab has taken their due share. And if this, this is something bad, so that bad is enough for my family as a whole. Got it? That was actually to zip their mouth, not to say. But once again, when they said Abdullah ibn Umar, so he said, Rajulun la yaksuna talaqa imratihi tuwalluna al khalafa. Otherwise, Abdullah ibn Umar was a great scholar and great alim. Sahib al ilmi wal ibadah. We call him what? Sahib al ilmi wal ibadah. And he was in such a love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that even Sunan Adi, even Sunan Adi, he was not missing. He saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing something because he needed. But later on, Abdullah was doing that because I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. As I told you that in freezing cold, he was with his servant, Nafi, Razi Allah ta'ala an, his liberated slave, Nafi, Mawla ibn Umar. Nafi, Mawla ibn Umar, Razi Allah ta'ala an, and a great scholar of Quran and Sunnah, great Imam, teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik. Yes, about whom Imam Malik said that make my cover close to my Sheikh Nafi. Yes, but he said in such a way that my head should not be in line with my Sheikh because that's a disrespect to that great man. So have my head in line with the chest of my Sheikh. So I have shown you, and I have shown you also that this Abdullah, this is Malik, Imam Malik, and this is Imam Nafi. So Imam Nafi says. That I was with Shaykh Abdullah ibn Umar, Razi Allah ta'ala an. So he came down off his uh, she camel, went down, there was a fountain, cold like snow. Yes, and he took three times some water and drank it. So I was thinking that maybe Shaykh is suffering from fever. Otherwise, in this cold weather, who will drink? cold water that many, that much. So he said, Sheikh, you are feeling good? He said, yes. You, you are thirsty? He said, no, I'm not thirsty. So you drank water. He said, I was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maybe that was June, July. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he came down off his camel and he went to this uh, fountain and he had drank water there from. So to follow his footstep, that's why I drank it. I didn't need it. But to cross over this fountain without taking water from that, I cannot do that. Because I saw the messenger of Allah. So that was his practice. But as we mentioned two nights before, yes, that talaq in hayz, that is legal, but that is makru tahrimi. Because that's bid'a. That's what? That's bid'a. Legal mean it has effect. Legal mean it has effect. But makru tahrimi mean that's a sin. That's what? That is a sin. And Abdullah ibn Umar 
he divorced his wife in Menses. And when Umar told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Abdullah did like this. So he said, Murhu fal yurajaha. Tell him to make a ruju to because that was talaq. Raja'i, not bida. Bida, there is no bida. If in bida you have given wine, so then he will make. Why you are doing like this? Don't jump. You are a alim. You are not a common layman. Every single word of a alim is noticed. Got it? So that was the lak raja'i. So he said, Murhu fal yurajaha. And Abdullah ibn Umar, he made ruju. He made ruju. But as he had done that, so Abdullah Sayyidina Umar said, that Rajul only Ahsana Talaq Amrati, a man who does not know how to divorce his wife properly, and you are handing him over the Khalafat and the leadership of the entire Ummah. So now Sahaba, they were quiet. Got it. But then he said that six people, those who are still alive from Ashar al Mubashara, from who? Ashar al Mubashara. So their shura are their counsel. They will select one of them. And later on the ummah, they will give pledge of allegiance to the man. Got it? So story is very lengthy and we have studied in, in, in Olafar Rashidin. Yes? So, anyhow, he said that that shura, so the shura gathered together. Now they were six. So if three on one side and three on the other side, then what? It will be tie. So he put Abdullah ibn Umar there, that if the case will become tie, so Abdullah will be having a casting vote. He'll be home. That's called casting vote. That will be the decisive vote. Got it? But anyhow, in the end, the result was, that five people were for Osman and one was for Ali. Out of six, five people were for Osman and one was for Ali. Ali was for Osman also amongst the five. And for Ali, there was only Sayyidina Osman who said that Ali should be. And then Abdurrahman ibn Awf yes, he gave his pledge of allegiance and bay'ah to Osman and all of them and then the general public. Then the general public did it. And when Sayyidina Usman Allah, got killed brutally, Allah, so people came to Ali that you were the runner candidate at that time. So now you are there. So you should announce your Khalafa. He said that not to me to announce the Khalafa. Where is Talha and where is Saad? People who were still alive from Ashara Mubashar. He said, that, and where is Zubair? That's their case. Got it. So then Sayyidina Ali, he said that I am not taking this much responsibility like this. If the general public will come and they will say, then I will. So then the general public of Medina came to the masjid and they gave their bay'ah to Sayyidina Ali. Raziyallahu ta'ala. Got it. And another precedence is because in situation that happened, And that's why the ulama, they have three points of view. Well, two. Number one, the bay'ah. And number two, the istikhlaf. They say it should be go through what? Through istikhlaf. That every predecessor must appoint a successor before his death. Hafiz ibn Hazm is one of them. He said this the best way. Yes? To be out of disputes. Got it? But the majority of ummah, they say the bay'ah. Got it? Istila. Istila means ghalaba. Overtaking. What? Overtaking. Because if somebody overtook the khalafa by force from someone, so what you will do? Here are two things. Number one, we mentioned in the conditions or in qualities of Khalifa that one of his quality is that he must have the power to control. 
So now the ex Khalifa, when he lost the control, so the quality is gone. Not only the control is gone, his quality of being Khalifa, that is gone. And number two, that the, net, the, the new one, he got the control. He got the control. So if he has other qualities of Khalifa, so just go for him. Because now if you want to overthrow him, so that will be a feud between Muslims and Muslims. Two groups will be fighting. Got it? And that's why Sayyidina Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an, he handed over the Khalafat to Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an. And furthermore, details are there because I want to make you political leaders.